In this demonstration, you're going to learn the basics of working with temporal data in ArcGIS Pro. So to start with, um, I've added a single layer to my ArcGIS Pro project. This is a point layer called Wildfire Points. Each of these points represents a single wildfire that has occurred at some point in the past. Uh, this is a relatively limited data set in that it only covers fires from about 2003 up till early 2022. So it's a little bit limited, right, to a couple of decades roughly, um, but it will uh, help illustrate uh, how you can work with temporal data in ArcGIS Pro. Now, one of the first things I want to do when I'm working with data sets uh, that potentially contain uh, temporal information is to examine the field structure of my feature class. One way I can do that is to open up the field view mode in ArcGIS Pro. So with my layer selected in the table of contents, I can go to the data tab and select fields. What this will do is it'll initiate field view mode for the currently selected layer, which is wildfire points. And uh, field view mode is essentially a listing of all the columns that are associated with this particular feature class. So you'll see things like field name, uh, the alias for each of the fields, the data type, whether or not each one is visible or not. So it's a full display of all of the columns that are associated with your attribute table. And you can see in this particular example, I've got a lot of, um, I've got a lot of columns of information here. Now, what you ideally would like to have when you're working with temporal information in ArcGIS Pro is you'd like to have uh, a date data type field. So if you look under data type here, what you're looking for ideally is a date uh, field. Uh, now, it is possible to work with temporal information that is stored in uh, columns that are textual, right? So if you have text columns or if you have numeric columns, those will work too. But ideally, you'd like to have a date uh, column available to you um, for a variety of reasons. Now, if you, for whatever reason, do not have a column that contains date information, but uh, that date information is stored in a, as a string, right? Textual information or as a numeric type, that data can be converted uh, over to a date column. Uh, there's a tool in ArcGIS Pro. Uh, that uh, facilitates uh, the conversion of text or numeric columns of, temp of temporal information over to a date data column. I'll cover that in a separate uh, demonstration uh, later on. But uh, for now, we'll, we'll focus in on these date columns, right? And you can see just kind of scanning through my field view that I have things like containment date time, control date and time. Uh, if I continue down here, I have final report, final fire report approved date. Um, Continuing to scroll down, fire discovery, date and time, fire out, date and time. So I have a lot of temporal information stored in this particular feature class. So that's going to make the process uh, much easier. All right. So at this point, I'm pretty confident that you know I've got uh, got a good amount of uh, temporal information that I can work with. We'll focus specifically on this fire discovery date time uh, column for this particular demonstration. I'm going to go ahead and close the field view mode at this point. Now, the next thing that I'm going to want to do is to time enable my map. When you time enable your map, uh, that means that you have one or more layers in the table of contents that uh, has had time enabled. Uh, in this case, we only have a single layer, so uh, it'll be fairly straightforward. I'll right click on the uh, wildfire points layer in my contents pane. I'll go to properties and uh, You'll notice that you know the time. Time isn't the default here, but time is what you're looking for under layer properties. You have several options under layer time. The default is no time, and uh, you have a couple of other options, including each feature has a single time field, and each feature has a start and end time field. So the first option, each feature has a single time field. That is for uh, temporal information that is for a specific uh, uh, time period, right? A specific time stamp. Whereas each feature has start and end fields, you're looking for two fields here, right? The first field defines the start time, the end field defines the end time. So in the case of wildfires, you might, uh, you know, you might select uh, for a start column, something like the fire discovery date and an end time of fire out date, right? When it was, when it was put out or when it was controlled or something like that. Now we're gonna keep this fairly simple. So I'm gonna select each feature has a single time field. And then under time field, this is where I'm gonna select the field that I want to uh, time enable. And so yeah, you kind of scroll through here to get a sense for, for what's available. Uh, and again, this can be any, really any data type field, whether that be a, a text, a numeric, or a date, but you're, you're ideally you're looking for a date column. 
And uh, as I mentioned earlier, we do have this fire discovery date time. If I select that, it's going to automatically calculate my time extent. And the time extent is just a, uh, the extent of time that you're dealing with for this particular column. So in other words, the initial date, so the earliest date, which in this case is 1-1 of 2003, and the latest date, which is 1-7 of 2022. Uh, now, it automatically calculates this for you. I, for some reason, it does not. There's a calculate button that will, when you click it, will recalculate the dates. Uh, but that should be done for you automatically. Now, there may be situations where you have data that is a live feed. So if you've added a layer, maybe a web service layer that uh, that's uh, being updated um, frequently, maybe every 10 or 15 minutes or, or whatever the time may be. But if you are having, you know, if you are referencing a layer that is a live data feed, um, you can enable that as well so that it automatically picks up new data as it's coming in. Uh, now, in this case, I'm not going to select a time interval. I don't really need to do that with this particular uh, data set. I'm not, gonna, not really going to work about time zone here either, and I don't need a time offset. And uh, so at this point, then I'm going to go ahead and hit OK, and that should time enable my layer. So my layer has now been time enabled. Now, as soon as that happens, you'll notice that a time slider appears at the top of your map. Uh, it is has a certain amount of transparency set to it by default so that it doesn't uh, obscure the view. But if you mouse over that time slider, then it activates it. And so at that point, then you can see your start time, your end time, which is your time extent. And uh, of course, there's a play button here. Uh, allows you to play uh, forward, and then you can incrementally play forward or backwards as well. Now, I'm gonna go into the details of how you work this time slider in a separate demonstration. And then I'll also go into the details of how you configure this time slider in a separate demonstration as well. But you may have noticed that as soon as time was enabled for the map, there is a context menu that shows up in the ribbon, right? So here's my map context tab with a time tab. This is the ribbon that we will use uh, to configure this time slider. Now I'm going to save that for a separate demonstration coming up in the future. Um, you know, but right now I just want to kind of show you the details of uh, you know, the, the temporal information, uh, what you're looking for uh, in your attribute table, and uh, basically how to time enable a map. Now, one thing I did not uh, show you was the attribute table for the, for the column that we selected. And if we open that up and scroll over, Here's the column that we're using in this case, fire discovery date and time. Right? And so you'll notice in this particular example, not only do we have a date, but we also have a time uh, as well. And that's perfectly acceptable when you're working with temporal data. Sometimes you just have a date. Sometimes you have uh, a date and a time like we do here, or maybe you just have a time. Right? And so there are a lot of different combinations of what is acceptable uh, for your temporal information. In this particular case, so we're working with both the date uh, and the time. So uh, that's all I wanted to show you for now. Uh, my next demonstration on working with temporal data will show you how to configure uh, this uh, time slider at, uh, in different ways. So thank you for joining me and uh, we'll see you next time for the uh, demonstration on, um, on configuring the time slider.